we can't talk about occlusion and ignore the related movement of jaw. Therefore, uh, let us briefly talk about important movements of mandible in relation to maxilla. Jaw movements is very complex because center of rotations is constantly shifting in many directions while the jaw opens and closes. Therefore, a flat plane will not accommodate simultaneous functional contact of dental arches. Curvatures of the dental arch was first described by von Spee and ever since it has been referred to as curve of Spee. The curve of Spee is the imaginary line drawn over the working cusp tips of the mandibular teeth when they are viewed laterally. In addition, when looking at the mandible frontally, there is an imaginary plane curvature that it is referred to curve of Wilson. In my opinion, an overall evaluation of a curve of speed and Wilson for any possible disharmony should be the first step. The next important step is evaluation of occlusion should be the evaluations of the relationship size, position, and teach to each other. Normally, maxillary incisal will vertically overlap mandibular incisor by half of the length of the mandibular incisor crowns. Both mandibular and maxillary incisors are labially inclined with the angle of approximately 15 to 25 degree toward each other. Normally, contact in the anteriors are light or slightly open when arches are in maximum intercuspation position. Vertical and horizontal relationship of anterior teeth are crucial factor in leading the movements of mandible. Determination of eccentric relations of the patient jaw is also invaluable. Unfortunately, it is not always possible to make this determination for all patients. In my opinion, the simplest way to find your patient's centric relations is to use both hands to maneuver both condyles simultaneously in their most superior anterior position seated against the articular fossa. This is a reliable reference for the purpose of determining of occlusion. Normally, when this position captured, only one molar contact will be seen on each side of the arches with a slight opening of the anterior teeth. As soon as you identify the first point of contact on the central relationship position, ask the patient to apply force to the teeth and condyle simultaneously. You may see there is a slight superior anterior physiologic shift in order to achieve the maximum intercuspal position. Note the directions and amount of shift on the patient's mandible. If this shift is less than or about to 2 mm in the directions of superior anterior, we consider it to be acceptable. Professionals continue to debate over what is the most acceptable positions of the condyle. However, there is a common agreement among all camps that the most orthopedically stable position is when condyles are in centric relations and the teeth are in maximal intercostal position. Briefly, here is what I think the most orthopedically stable position is. When condyles are in their most superior anterior position in the articular fossa, resting against the posterior slopes of articular surfaces, with the disc properly interposed in a manner that the condyles are positioned in the intermediate zone of articular disc and when the tonus elevator and depressor muscles 
have no occlusal influences. At this point, we can say the musculoskeletal position and orthopedical stable positions are the same. In other words, when all these conditions above are met, we can call it orthopedically stable positions. If closure of the mandible in the musculoskeletal position result in premature occlusal contact, the neuromuscular proprioceptive system will feed back the repositioning of the mandible to find the next best position for accommodating this occlusal discrepancy. Many discrepancy in occlusion will move the mandible away from its pure musculoskeletal position and the orthopedically stable position. Therefore, the musculoskeletal stable position is only possible in coexistence and in harmony with optimum tooth contacts. This, this podcast has covered important movement of the mandible in relation to the maxilla and orthopedic and occlusal stability. As a follow-up, I recommend that you listen to the next podcast in this series in which I discuss why it is important to have mutually protected occlusions. Thank you.